I love science. I love anything about space. I had my, got my first telescope when I was in sixth grade, and I've always looked up at the sky to look at the stars, and I just find it the most interesting thing in the world because here we are on this little planet in the solar system, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. When I was a teenager, there was a total eclipse of the sun, and I never forgot it because all of a sudden, the sky just started getting darker and darker and the birds got quieter and quieter until there wasn't any bird song anymore. I was all by myself. I was in a field by my house. And I'll remember standing there and thinking, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And I have to wait over 40 years to see it again. And so when I found out that that was gonna happen in 2017, I said, I really, 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 really wanna do something about that. The star of this book is a hippo. The other star of this book is the sun. So how do total solar eclipses work? First, you need the planet Earth. The second thing you need is the sun. And over here, our sun's gonna be this cow pie right here. The next thing you need, the moon. See this pretty little white rock? This is gonna be the moon. Now a total solar eclipse only happens when we experience the phase of new moon. So um, when that new moon starts to orbit around the earth like this and it comes across between the sun and the earth, there's a shadow right where my arm shadow is. And that's called the umbra. That's the darkest part of the shadow cast by the moon. And that's how we experience the total solar eclipse that will happen here on August 21st, 2017. It's a sunny day out here today. That means I'm wearing sunscreen to protect my skin. When you're viewing a total solar eclipse, it's always important to protect your eyes. Sunglasses aren't gonna do it. They're not strong enough. Please do not use your sunglasses to look at the sun. What you do need are special eclipse glasses, special eclipse viewers, or even a pinhole projector that you can make. Your local science store will have those on hand, or you can always go online and see what's available. So now we have to draw the sun. Now the sun is a sphere, which when you're drawing it, it's gonna look like a circle. Drawing perfect circles is really hard and you don't have to draw a perfect circle freehand. What you can do is trace around a circle. So this is the shape and the size of, this is the size of my circle. It's, it's all the same shape, it's a circle. And I will trace around it like, the sun is huge. It would take a million earths to fill the entire sun. The reason the sun looks small is because it's far away. It's super far away. If it wasn't far away, we'd be in big trouble because the sun is also very hot. What I'm doing is working with the tooth of the paper. That's where I get this pattern. And it's not tooth like a tooth on there. It's tooth and paper. Paper actually has little hills and valleys on it, little bumps. And when the oil pastel goes over the top of it, over the tops of those bumps, it doesn't get all the way down to the bottom of the bumps. And so that's how you get this little texture. So it looks fuzzy. We have most of the colors of the rainbow in this book, but with this hippo, he's really kind of a gray lavender. And that isn't just one color. He's actually made up of three colors. So I'm gonna show you how I get this hippo color with three different colors. I love to color. For this book, I'm not using crayons, I'm using oil pastels and mine are well used. They, all the paper's torn down so I can get to it. But with this hippo, I need to find my three colors that make up this hippo and I already remember what they are. First is lavender. The second is periwinkle. And the third is a light gray. When I start to color my strokes, you notice that I'm not going like this. I'm actually just moving my wrist and I call this a mouse stroke. And sometimes if I have to get to a little teeny tiny place like I'm here, I'll just go about this. My strokes are really small and I call these ant strokes. Teeny tiny strokes. It really helps me if I imagine myself as small as an ant. I can get into those spots even though the top of this pastel is really fat. 
It's not sharp like a pencil. Second color, this periwinkle. Same mouse strokes going over the top. And the reason it's really important for me to remember the three colors that exactly make up the hippo is this hippo has to stay the same color throughout the book. Periwinkle layer. Layer three, light gray. This is the top coat. This is gonna blend those other two together. I'm gonna press a little bit harder, but I'm still staying with those mouse strokes. And that's how you get that kind of purpley hippo gray. You see, I start off with this black piece of paper and just with a few little strokes, all of a sudden you come up with all these colors. And when it's filled it all in, it even gets more intense like this. So to me, the exciting part is actually making something with just little strokes of your fingers. And when you put it all together, the colors are just magnificent. As far as coloring with, and even if you color with brown, brown is absolutely beautiful. So it doesn't have to be the brightest colors. Like, look how pretty that is. Even black and white can be awesome. Like with our little zebra here. Just for me, a day without coloring is a day without sunshine because it's just something that you do just to make yourself feel good. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.